Jonathan Ward. I'm CEO and lead designer of a little company called Icon We're here in California. We started our first company called TLC back in 1996. TLC is pretty much everything pertaining to vintage Toyota Land Cruisers, so sales, service, parts, restoration. Over time, that evolved. Uh, Toyota found out about us. We started doing restorations for Toyota execs or uh, dealership owners. Toyota was trying to figure out what was it about the classic Land Cruisers that generated such a maniacal fan base. They heard about us. We got a phone call. Mr. Toyota came to visit the shop. He came and explained uh, why he was there, and they ended up commissioning us to build first one and then three of the pre-production design study vehicles for what eventually became the FJ Cruiser. So from that experience and the trends I noticed in the market, more and more people had an, a very strong affinity to the vintage aesthetic and utilitarian purpose and design of the vehicle, but absolutely no interest nor connection with the archaic mechanical experience. So slowly but surely we were doing modern engine conversions and then Icon represented an opportunity to kind of transcend that traditional sort of resto mod approach. I saw kind of a perfect storm of very rapid uh, evolutions in reverse engineering and CAD mapping and low volume manufacturing techniques where suddenly a, a, an asinine business model like this made somewhat sense because then we could stay true to the original silhouette and vibe of the vehicle, but instead of piecemeal upgrading things, we could take more responsibility and engineer the whole thing fresh. And we started with the Land Cruiser just because it's the closest to my heart and the one that we had the most reputation and experience for. So we have production models, as you can see, using the term quite lightly because they're still all hand built. But we have the, the BR based on the vintage Ford Bronco, the FJ based on the vintage Toyota Land Cruisers in four body styles, CJ based on the World War II Willys, and then the TR Thriftmaster based on that 47 to 53 truck. Then being the geek that I am, that wasn't enough fun. And once I kind of do the engineering and design and a couple are built and rolling, uh, I'm fortunate to have management team and production staff that then keeps that healthy and keeps it rolling. But to me, it's that first build is the sweet spot. Sometimes like the Bronco, definitely we saw an incredible amount of requests. What about a Bronco? What about a Bronco? What about a Bronco? And then Jim Farley uh, at, at Ford, we, we had worked well together uh, on projects at Toyota. So Jim sent me an email and said, hey, if you thought about doing a Bronco, you know, we'd like to do a show car Bronco. I guess being the opportunistic pig that I am, I'm like, well, yeah, but we don't want to do a show car. Like, we want to engineer the bugger. And so we ended up doing that at Ford's request with Nike as our development partner. Uh, so that's how that took shape. We invite a client to bring us their own vintage Bronco, or if they prefer, we hunt it down for them. And then we first start by taking that original vehicle and documenting any needs from the ravages of time or stupid things changed over the years. Then there's the fixtures and jigs to reconfigure the vehicle for our ergonomics, our dash, our audio components, stuff like that. Then it gets media blasted to uh, white metal. Then it gets uh, heat epoxy cured and caulked. Then uh, we'll go through a build sheet with a client. So we maintain that direct relationship, both in feedback to help improve the product and to really make it truly bespoke so it fits that client the best we can. It's about 1,200 hours internal time plus sublet time uh, from start to finish. And they're, they're built by two-man teams, so there's great pride in ownership. Um, when that team finishes the build, they're the first ones to road test it, then I'm the second one then our foreman, then back to them where we all keep a pad and write a shit list of things that concern us, be it vibrations or rattles. We, we put about three to 600 miles on every single vehicle that we build before they go out. We do two distinct styles. One's called a derelict and the other a reformer. Derelicts, we celebrate this sort of romantic sense of history and the patina, wabi-sabi, transient funk. So they kind of look 
barn find, borderline abandoned, it depends on the car. Uh, but what we do is actually take the body off the vintage chassis and then we use various scanning technologies to get the profile of the body into CAD, focusing on the underside. Then we'll engineer one-off chassis rails that'll index non-invasively with that body and then we partner with different companies, most notably Art Morrison, to engineer those chassis for us. So the reformers, same idea of modern drivability and functionality, but the reformers are concourse restored to newer, better. But then we add a twist to that too, because we like to put ourselves in the shoes of the original designer and ask, what did he really intend with all the finer details of the design? And in some cases, we've been able to work with the original designers, which is really fun. That takes it to a whole nother level. Well, the derelict takes a pretty sick individual with a highly evolved palette and sense of style. A lot of people look at the derelicts like showing one at Pebble Beach for the first time was hysterical. And I wish I had like hidden a microphone in the car to, so I could have caught all the comments. So everything from people going, you know, that's going to be really cool. You know, what color are you going to paint it when you save up? And I'm like, no, we're done to people that are just like, oh yeah, like perfect, it's magic combination, I never thought of that. So it's a total yin or yang thing. I think the, the reformers are, are a bit more palatable for a wider audience, but the derelicts are my favorite. As Icon has grown, I've been honored how many people know the brand and more importantly, what it stands for. At the same time, I kind of feel like we've been cheating because probably 80, 90% of the battle in marketing is, is that all of our designs are already part of culture, part of history in people's hearts and minds. So I first started challenging myself like, all right, well, could you find success with something that doesn't have that going for it? So the, um, the first concept from scratch that I've been playing with, uh, we're calling the Helios. And Helios was the Greek god of the sun. So the Helios is based on the, a bunch of theoreticals, including like, what if uh, the Great Depression had not occurred? What if World War II had not derailed that design language of modern and streamlined at, at the highest sense? Because basically around that same time, you know, we had the, the perversions of the Industrial Revolution kind of changing priority in manufacture, especially in transportation product. So there's a bit of aircraft, there's a bit of rail car, um, there's a lot of sort of technical industrial, um, the whole main body structure is designed to be engineered uh, sort of like a fuselage structure would be, so it's sort of super legera but reinterpreted. You know, at the turn of the century there were far more electric car companies than there were internal combustion companies, you know, Studebaker uh, went from horse-drawn carriages direct to electric and then backpedaled into gas as they saw those political trends guiding that future. So as part of that revisionist theory, we're also thinking, you know, well, in the 30s, if it hadn't been for those political factors, EV would have evolved and been brilliant. So we thought it would be ideal to build the Helios on top of the Tesla Model X and uh, now we're hoping Tesla agrees with us, but if they don't and we're just a little distraction, then we certainly understand and I will just simply buy one and take it apart. And me and people on staff much smarter than me, uh, my electrical engineers, will figure out how to make it work and we'll just go for it. <laughs>